West Michigan. This is Grand Tap Media Business TV. My name is Pamela Kime, your host. The spirit of the show is to introduce West Michigan to all the businesses, nonprofits, individuals that can help us thrive in our lives and our business. We have a very special guest for you today, and he is on remote, and he is world renowned. I am so excited to have him on the show today. Our guest today is a dynamic entrepreneur who is widely recognized as one of the world's leading experts on disruption and innovation. He has launched billion dollar businesses, transformed entire industries, revamps, government in institutions and in other, and over three decades continues to help build successful businesses enduring global trends. Described as we're wired as having the coolest job in the industry and new, the new media guru and internet pioneer by Economic Times, he has launched billion dollar businesses, transformed the entire industry. Everyone from the Pope to the president calls on him to orchestrate positive change in era of endless innovation. The former independent vice chair of, oh my gosh, I forgot this guy's name. Okay, all right, give, him, give me five minutes here. All right, all right. Everyone from the Pope to the President calls on him to orchestrate positive change in the era of endless innovation. He is a best selling author of books. Wait, he is a best selling author of the books Disrupt Yourself, Master Personal Transformation, and, and the new book, The Future Proofing You which I have read and I highly recommend. His books have been translated into 10 languages. He is a regular contributor to Fortune, World, Wall Street Journal, and a host, and host of documentary series. Pleasure, Pamela. All right, I'm gonna go into more of the intro um, later down, but I wanna sh share with West Michigan who you are and how you can help businesses thrive in this innovation, and especially since COVID has happened, all of us are pivot, I guess the word today is pivoting, which is kind of getting old or disruption. So share about who you are and how you can help businesses um, move forward in the future. So the pandemic really proved to, some, to everyone something that I've said for years, that whether by choice or circumstance, every business will get disrupted. But disruption isn't about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to what happens. So for the 150 wealthiest Americans, they doubled their net worth, not what they make in a year, they doubled their entire worth during the pandemic. For the bottom 140 million Americans that make up uh, ownership of 1% of what's left, uh, it wiped out the middle class. So I've dedicated the rest of my life to teaching people how to be successful entrepreneurs. I, I teach it at the university level. I had one semester where students did $100 million dollars uh, and in Future Proofing You, I took a young immigrant who grew up on welfare and mentored him one day a week for a year. I gave him no capital, introduced him to no contacts, and he had to start a business that took zero dollars. And he went from zero to hero. Spoiler alert for the book readers. Uh, he made a million dollars by the time of the 11th month. And the message there is I tried to synthesize that coaching and mentoring down to 12 truths that if you follow these, you'll be successful. This isn't a get rich quick scheme. This isn't some gimmick. This is what I've noticed is the pattern. I started no different than everybody, everybody listening. I bought into what we were taught as children, get good grades, graduate school and live happily ever after. And that's not how it works. I got out of school, there was a recession. During the next five years, half of all jobs in the US will disappear. I mean, the state of Michigan has seen this for quite some time. Wages have been flat since the 1980s. So if you're in debt, if you're struggling, if you're at a job that doesn't satisfy you, that doesn't let you live the way that you want, there is another path. And for some reason, we don't teach people this. Okay, so let's talk, let me ask you, okay, welcome. I wanna welcome you to West Michigan. And I know you said you've been here, um, but we are a separate, we feel like we're a lot different than the east side of, of Michigan, I will share with that. But you know that Michigan has really suffered through the lockdown. We've had uh, a lot of disruption. How, Jay, I, as I was reading your book and I've listened to all, these, all, your, all of your interviews, you're just an incredible 
insight of what you think the future is going with America. But I think there's a lot of people that are still holding on to the old way of doing business. And a lot of us did get involved in the lockdown and a lot of us didn't do as well. I know you said there's, you could see that, but learn a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what are you seeing on, on how people are handling this, this huge disruption so to let, our lives. Let's, let, so if we go back to January and we saw what happened in our nation's capital, and I know you've had similar things at your state's capital, what I see is thousands of Americans feeling left out, left behind, fighting just for a piece of leftovers. That that American dream of that, I mean, in the 1950s, an average home in Michigan was two years wages. So only one parent went to work and everybody retired to a pension. So those days are gone. And if you thought getting that job at that big secure company was the method, well, there is no security. Every day we have startups that replace 100-year-old companies. So it isn't security that robs ambition, it's the illusion of security. But let's focus on the positives if you weren't physically uh, afflicted by the, by the pandemic. One of the things that have finally proved is people can work from home, right. which means people don't have to live in expensive cities. People can live in the beautiful West Michigan area but they're not limited to hiring people within five and 10 miles. You can hire the best people for your team anywhere in the world. Your customers don't have to be down the street. They can be anywhere. Your phone makes you one click away from 7 billion consumers. You only have to be right for a nanosecond to make a billion dollars or change the world. And every 48 hours prior to the pandemic, a new self-made billionaire was created. Let that sink in. I don't know how you spent your weekend, Pamela, but you're a slacker. <laughs> It's now slightly uh, more than one billionaire created every day, every 26 hours. So what are these people doing differently? I grew up in Philadelphia. I grew up as son of a school teacher. You know, I didn't know what a millionaire was. And if you would have told me dozens of friends would have become self-made billionaires, I would have simply asked you what you were smoking. But I noticed a pattern. I noticed how Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and all the various people that I've worked with how they approached opportunity. And if you understand that we do not have a scarcity of opportunity, you can get your, your piece and live your way. It goes back to elementary school. In elementary school, you were taught business was this, Pamela. Jay buys a banana for $1, I sell it to you for $2, and that's how you make money. While mathematically accurate, that's not how wealth is created. Wealth is created by actually making money, money that did not exist in the world without you, money that wasn't made by the Federal Reserve. So Pamela, I'm starting a new company. I sell you 10% for $10,000. What do I now have? I have 10,000 in cash and $90,000 in stock. I can hire people, I can buy things, I can trade things. That is how wealth is created. That's how Jeff Bezos could lose money year after year after year for a decade and come out the back end as the wealthiest man in history. Okay, so let's, all right, I was, I've been reading your book and, and, you, and you took a, a millennial that was homeless and you turned him into a millionaire. A no, year. he turned himself into Well, it. you um, did. You mentored him or he followed just your steps. How did that, I think in the book, it shows that you were following your steps and so, he had a hustle. He really had a hustle. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's nothing here that says that you're not gonna work but he was willing to work harder for one year than most people were willing to work so he can live the rest of his life in a manner most people can't. And it starts with the most basic thing, which is a, having a growth mindset, looking at every obstacle in your life as an opportunity in disguise. Entrepreneurs don't sell things, they solve things. Solve the problem for five people, you have friends. Solve for a million, you make money. Solve for a billion, you change history. So. If you have problems in your life, start recognizing that other people have them and the simple solutions can be worth a fortune. We've all watched Shark Tank. We've all seen people take a simple problem and turn it into business. So in this young man's uh, case, he, like everyone of his generation, grew up with social media. He said, I can do social media for others. But given his circumstance, he's not suddenly going to get a phone call from Coca-Cola saying, will you do our social media? He only knows other broke people, and there's a million other people that can do social media. But please share so, with you, when you picked him out, 
it was kind of like the pigmania. Can you share in your book? Because you, sure. in the book, you just like, you just, he wasn't somebody, was a panel and you picked him out and said that. You just picked him out randomly. When I was watching all your interviews, my husband was amazed. He's like, he's like, are you kidding me? Because we all, do you really think we can become millionaires? Seriously, Jay? E everyone, the, 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 the mere fact of the way you're phrasing that is because a lifetime of parents and teachers telling you what you can't do, that you've bought into that. And whatever limitations you think you have, you can change. That's what my first book was about, Disrupt You. Everybody thinks of changing the world, but nobody thinks of changing themselves. So the first thing that I had to do with this young man is get him to believe that he could. And so, how? which he found out. How did you do when it? it? Well, <laughs> he, he found out how when he read the book, because I kept this, this from him. But in our very first meeting, I lied to him. Something I'm not proud of, but there's a psychological effect called the Pygmalion effect. A uh, professor went to school, tested all the kids, and told the teachers, these three students would be super achievers, super learners this year. And at the end of the year, those three kids excelled better than everybody. But the professor lied. He never looked at the test results, picked three names out of a hat. But if you tell people they're special and you treat them special, they become special. So I told Vin, I had interviewed over 100 candidates, and he was the only one that had all the attributes to be a self-made millionaire. And though he didn't believe it, he figured if this old successful dude did, he'd go along. By the end of his first month, when he had made $60,000, he believed. He was unstoppable. He could have walked across water. And seeing that transformation, witnessing it, and I've done this you know, many times, but I wanted to pick somebody that everybody could say, you're at least at the same starting point that they are. And it is so achievable. The only person stopping you is you. If you, you know, the, the, the great Michiganian uh, Henry Ford had a great saying, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Well, uh, being from West Michigan, uh, we, Grant Hit Media is separate from, I just record my show out of here. But anyways, we, during the lockdown, you know, I was doing live, I was doing interviews, I was going to an event. I'm just going to tap with you because you're sitting right here. I would be like on a plane, be excited to be sitting next to you. And my job became, a, did not, I wasn't essential. Do you understand what that means? There's a lot of people walking around that there's, their jobs were essential and I was non-essential. That's what I meant. And all of a sudden, here I am at home trying to figure out how to pivot and everything. I was part of the, I was part of the network. That was my superpower. It was gone. And I just didn't handle it well. And everybody's like, everybody else is like, well, you should have chose better. And that's what's happened in our society a little bit. I was at work in the net networking, we do events. Do you understand? We do, we do live events. All of that was gone and try to pivot. And I know that we can do virtual, but it's not the same thing. It, it, it works, but, but it's not but, really the same thing. But how many people did made millions of dollars doing virtual events? How many people found right. another business? How many people said, what? Does society now need because they're locked in their house? How can I satisfy that? Every obstacle is an opportunity in disguise. So I have an exercise in both in future proofing you of how to spend 30 days writing down three problems a day. And by the end of that, you'll have 90 solid business ideas to start with. Tell us a little and bit about said, that because I did that and I wrote down, I've been doing that and it's been um, mind, mind bog, you know, mind opening writing down the problems I endure a day, like things that really okay. bug me, right? So, so tell what, us, tell what, us jumped, how to do what jumped out at you as something that you'd like to solve? Um, share with you what that is? Uh, yeah. For me, okay. Um, my thing is that I'd like to, to develop a thing. I, I, we all are, want to give back to society, and I see that with recycling, whatever. But my thing is I forget to turn off the lights right during some in areas of the house and i get home and i'm disappointed that the lights have been on all day and i'm wasting energy i like to be able to walk out the door and just push a button lights off everything electronically that can possibly be electronic i mean electric is off because uh we're getting our electricity is going to double we got a letter in the mail saying our electricity is okay. going to double in our area so i so want to give i want to do that what's the next step i I'm no, I don't know anything about electricity, and I would have to find somebody that would understand that, but I want to walk out. I have an alarm system in my area, so I have an alarm system, and I want to hit all the lights possible, even the water okay. here, to save okay, money. Okay, you've said that, but what's the next logical step? 
I don't know, Jay, what would be the next logical step? I'd be sitting next to you in the plane. What would you tell me? You're going to have to create a team. You're going to have to find somebody that can do the, the, the coding of that app. You're going to do some research to see that there already are sensors that do that. Okay. And you can have people buy a kit of those, plug everything into those, and then have an app. It's one button. But you have to remember, Steve Jobs built a trillion dollar company, the first trillion dollar company, and he's written as much code as you, Pamela. He's not a, he wasn't an engineer. Steve couldn't read code. We live in a technological world. You only need two things to be successful. Insight, which is what you're working on, and perseverance, which I believe you have. Everything else can be hired. Typical mom on a school night, daughter has to do some poster board project for the next day in school, and, and the girl messes the thing up. She goes, mom, please go back to the store, get me another piece of poster board, please, please, please. And the mom, tired after a day of work and, and everything, goes out to the store, gets it. But before her daughter can mess it up again, she takes a yardstick and makes really fine little lines on the poster board. And the next morning, she's thinking, why don't they sell poster board this way? I'm sure other kids mess up. That's a problem. She talks with her sister. They get the idea. They basically get a patent and they go to the biggest maker of poster boards and they make about $5 million. No employees, no capital. Just solving a problem. Just solving a problem. In your book, let's talk about the future proofing you. You said there's 12, 12 keys, right? I've got the book here too. You know, all right, so let's talk about what's in it and when some you say you can turn people, they follow these steps. Are you you are because you did that with Vin, being able will be able to figure out what they're what they're good at, right? By all these steps and then how they can become a millionaire with it. Yeah. Okay, so share so some more about with the, that. It starts, with, it starts with the growth mindset. We talked about that. Right. Um, one of the other things that holds people back is fear. Fear of losing their job, fear of losing money, fear of embarrassment, all these fears that hold them back. And what I hate is all the internet gurus that tell you fear isn't real, fear is out of your head, and you suddenly feel like you're a failure because you can't overcome fear. Well, guess what? You cannot overcome fear. We are hardwired biologically at our core. The oldest part of our brain, the part that's known as the lizard brain, has a fight or flight reflex. In that first moment when I see you in a room, are you trying to eat me, kill me, attack me? You can't overcome that fear. Athletes channel that to make the body create adrenaline, which then lets them have super physical powers. But here's how you deal with fear and here's how you harness fear and make fear a tool. Yes, those fears are real. And if you're walking down the street and thinking about, I'm afraid I'm going to fail, I'm afraid I'm going to be an embarrassment of all that stuff. And a big 18 wheel semi comes barreling down the sidewalk, no brakes, honking its horn. Are you thinking about being embarrassed? Are you thinking about being a failure? No, you're thinking about losing your life, which means you can prioritize fear. So if you're at a job or a career or a business, that isn't giving you the life that you deserve, that you're not living the lifestyle that you deserve, and you're trading a day of your life, a week of your life, a month of your life, you're giving away the most precious thing you have, your entire life for what? The purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. So if you can keep at the front of your mind fear of wasting the one life that you have, those other fears of what people think diminish in, 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 in in size and matter. But now, if you buy into that one premise, now let's flip it. Every person you go to sell has the same fears, all right? At 21, I had a crazy idea in Los Angeles that would save Ford Motor Company $600 million a year. Now, I knew no one at Ford. I had no background in automotive, but I knew I was right. So I brainstormed, how do I get from where I am to making that happen? And I tell the story and, and disrupt you. Short answer is, I was looking in, in, in the newspaper and it said that the coach of Michigan State football team had just retired. I figured everybody in Detroit was fan of the football. I hired the guy as my head of sales and at 21, I went into the boardroom and pitched my idea to 
to Ford and they said yes. So there's always a solution. The idea is to look for it. And so you're going How do you to see fail. Those? You are you're a natural at seeing um, you know, the future, innovation. I mean, I mean, no. it be, seems like it comes natural to you and some of us are, they're looking and they just feel like they're spinning. They don't know. The, the, the best way to predict the future is to hang out with the people that are coding it. So who in your peer group, who on your Facebook, who are you getting insights from? Are you spending time with people that are unsuccessful? Most likely you will be unsuccessful too. So there are endless opportunities. And I talk about that no one is, should try to do this alone. Don't fly solo is one of the 12 truths. I, I worked with Reid Hoffman to start a startup called LinkedIn. You can use that tool to find mentors that can help you through each stage of your growth. So you want a media company, what successful media executives are mentors for you? Why have you not reached out? Why have you not built those relationships? Why have you not learned from the mistakes and lessons that they've been through so that you don't have to repeat the same mistakes? Yeah, when you, true, true. When you, and so you, when you realize you that, bit, that there's a, when ahead. you realize that there's abundance out there, you'll realize that people want to help you. It's not that, it's not that zero sum game of the banana example. It's not that there's only so much money and if you get it, I don't get it. That's the mentality that causes the problems in this country. Uh, Immigrants are taking our jobs. Robots are taking jobs. Somebody's taking. No. There is endless opportunity. That's why I chose an immigrant in my experiment. One out of three Fortune 500 companies were created by someone brand new to our shores with no capital, no background. But they were had a purpose. They were using their persistence to pull themselves forward. How do you see, uh, I mean, there are some people of your level are saying that, uh, I'm just going to ask you, that they're, the America's done. We just don't know it yet. And what are you seeing on, on that uh, opportunity? I, I hope it's not true, but when I'm listening to them saying, are we in denial? That, and I don't want to believe that, that we're done. Well, the, unless you believe the future's already written, the future's what you want to make it to be. So you can change lives, you can make any difference that you, that you want. What I do see is there are others that are now hungering for the knowledge that we have at our fingertips and we take for granted. And so when my book uh, became number one in Vietnam and, and it came out in, in Lithuania and, and it's coming out in Urdu, what it's telling me is that there's people all over the world seeking that American dream. And since we're all interconnected, you don't have any advantage. The only advantage America has, we don't have the best educational system, everybody has access to capital, everybody has access to technology, is we have less of a fear of failure than most cultures. Our cultural icons were Lucille Ball or Homer Simpson. They get a get rich quick scheme, they blow up in their face and then life goes on. So we have no shame in trying. I've raised hundreds of millions of dollars for startups and I will tell you that every VC would rather back somebody who's failed than somebody who was their first time out. So culturally America still has that huge advantage over everybody else, but opportunity is not distributed equally. You have to seek it and it's harder for some people to seek it than others. Uh, but it's within the reach of every human being. I've seen it, I've been all over the world, I've run companies all over the world, I've had hundreds of thousands of employees and I see no differences. And post pandemic, we now realize you can live in anywhere and build a global company because you can have remote workers and that's a new superpower available to every entrepreneur. All right, so I saw you on TED Talk uh, and you did an amazing job. But one of the things I wanted to, to ask you about, I love Groundhog Day. That's one of my favorite movies that you, Me quoted, too. Yeah, you talked about. But the one thing um, that the Bill Murray did in that he had, he never lost time. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're all like most of us entrepreneurs that I see out there, we want to do stuff, but what is it that we should be spending our time on? Can you share a little bit what you see 
uh, our biggest mistakes that we're making. So well, it's well, lagging. let's take Groundhog Day. Yes. What was genius about Groundhog Day was in the beginning, he had endless time to focus on himself and it got him nowhere, okay? He'd chase all the ladies, he'd do this, he'd do whatever. But the moment he changed his focus to serving others, to helping others, that's when his life changed. And that's the same for the entrepreneur. But he, he the did greatest, develop himself though. He did with music, but the, art. But the greatest, what, but it was the helping of others and using that. The second you realize that the easiest way to help yourself is to solve for others, that's where success will come from. You know, so where do people waste time? Um, how many hours a week do people watch television? People spend five hours a day looking at their phone screen. You have the time, okay? Um, we are connected on the internet to 14,000 years of human knowledge, or we can watch cats playing on the piano. The choice is to the individual. Um, Andrew Carnegie came to this country as a poor Scottish immigrant and he went to the public library. He became one of the five industrial giants worth billions at a time when a billion dollars was a lot of money. And he then went back to all of America and said, if you small town will build the building, I will fill it and turn it into library. And he built 1600 libraries to help people. When I was appointed by the president, uh, I had the same idea. If we could get the internet into every classroom, we could increase the chances of success for our youth. And the president appointed me. And then he said, but we don't have a penny in federal dollars. And 18 months later, we had wired every classroom in the U.S. onto the internet back in the 90s when there was no Wi-Fi right. uh, without spending a penny of taxpayer dollars. So a big idea will attract great minds to work on it. Mark Cuban was a young startup who worked for me on that. I mean, the number of people that came out of that project is, is amazing. Uh, Don't you think that, okay, so let's talk about, I know that you are do a lot of coaching and there's a lot of people out there. Uh, many of us know like Gary V. you probably know him personally, that's out there. And then you have um, Dan Penyon. I mean, is it really just do it? Is it just to get out there and do it? Or do you really so need to I don't, research? I don't do any coaching. I, I'm not trying to monetize this in any way, shape, or form. Okay. I, I don't sell seminars. I don't have masterminds. You can't buy a t-shirt with my face on it. All that I'm trying to do is pay it forward because you cannot have democracy without a strong middle class. And the middle class got wiped out during this pandemic. Right. And globally, the middle class is shrinking, not expanding. From an economic or a political economic standpoint, there's never been a war between two countries that have a McDonald's. So when you have a middle class, when you have trade, you have peace, you have prosperity, you have solutions. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm not trying to sell you on, on catchy phrases or whatever, but as far as taking action, yes, it all starts with moving forward. You don't have to know every step of a journey to take the first step. You can also work backwards and, and disrupt you. I teach people how to work backwards from their goal. You know, you want to be a doctor. Well, then you probably have to go to med school. Well, then you probably have to go to good college. Well, you probably have to get great. You can work backwards from where you want to go. And the other steps will fill in. And what you will realize when you are on a purposeful mission, that it's not the destination that gives you joy. It's the journey.